this is my 2014 Asus Q502LA that I've been using for the past three years. So let me tell you how I ended up with this machine. I was searching through Best Buy and you know they had a bunch of lackluster computers. You know the HP's, the Dell's, the Celeron's, the Pentium's, the crappy one gigabyte of RAM, all of that stuff. Then I came across this machine and I immediately fell in love. One reason I loved it happens to be this brushed aluminum finish, which reminds me of a MacBook. Another thing that I fell in love with is when you go toward the back. No, there isn't a second screen there. If we open it up, the Asus logo lights up. That's a good touch. Another thing that attracted me to this system was its specs. The Intel Core i5-4210U processor on this thing may not seem like much, especially seeing the 1.7 GHz clock. However, its maximum speed of 2.4 GHz is definitely something plus. It likes to go over that threshold a lot. It also has 8 GB of RAM and a 1 TB HDST hard drive of which I can replace at any point I want. The Wi-Fi card is a dual band by Intel that also has Intel Wide Eye and Bluetooth, which is all pretty cool stuff back in 2014. However, despite how good this uh, system may be, I did cheapen out. There is a better model of this system roaming around, which I couldn't really find on eBay. This is just a picture of uh, another laptop that's like mine, but not really. That had an Intel Core i7 processor, an NVIDIA graphics card, any DVD writer, but I figured I wouldn't be doing YouTube anyway, so I got it. Even though now I'm doing YouTube and I kind of need that card, so be it at this point. Now let's get to the ports and features of this thing, which are very interesting. Here's our DC jack, our Ethernet port, HDMI port, and two USB 3.0s, one of which, while the computer's off, can charge your phone. There is also a headset jack, but no dedicated microphone jack, unfortunately. Here's a Constantine lock slot, a USB 3.0 jack once again, an SD card reader that I believe can support up to 128 gigabytes, a Windows button, a volume button, and a power button. So you may be asking yourself why the power button and the volume rocker are both on the side of the computer well you're about to find out that is because this thing is a 360 degree laptop uh, uh. now obviously today mostly all the computers are like this however in 2014 there was only a select few which were good that were like this, such as the HP 360, and there's a few others, but I've largely forgotten about them. This also means that my trusty laptop has a touch screen, specifically a 1920 by 1080 panel that happens to be, well, touch screen. Let's go on to the keyboard and mice now. The keyboard is lit up, and you can see it in the dark but the uh, touchpad isn't lit up, but that's fine by me. I don't really use this thing in the dark anyway. And uh, it's kind of precise. Now that we've gone through all the likes, let's get to the dislikes, starting with the body. Now, I just praised it for its uh, nice aluminum finish. However, look at the many fingerprints that are on the system. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. But there are a lot of fingerprints, and that's just from me using it a little bit. If I use this thing off the charger day to day, there would be a lot more fingerprints on this thing. The second, I know it's obligatory, but the touch screen also leaves a lot of fingerprints. Like, I'll be using this thing for fun because I normally don't use touch screens, and then if uh, I'm not lucky, I'll have to clean off my screen just to see anything, which is terrible. As obligatory for modern laptops, the uh, 720p camera on this thing is atrocious. While it certainly can be worse, check out the audio quality. It's atrocious. 
and uh, my 720p Logitech camera can do better than this in the audio department. Video, however, it's fine. You can kind of see me a little bit. Another bad thing about the system was the Intel Wide Eye card. Now it's working fine, but back when I had Windows 8.1 on this thing, which by the way, Windows 8.1 was atrocious, the Wi Fi card would cut in and out. It doesn't matter what you were doing or what Wi Fi you were connected to. I had three at the time. This thing would simply connect and then disconnect. With Windows 10, it obviously fixed itself, but good lord. Now that I've vented about my hates, let's get on to the performance of this thing. Now, I already stated that it has an i5, 8GB of RAM, which I forgot to mention, you can upgrade it to 12GB, and a 1TB hard drive. So, how does it perform in daily life? Web browsing, as you may expect, is a breeze. Look at this. I mean, obviously the touchpad's lackluster, as I said before, but it's still a breeze to surf on the internet. Video quality of the LCD is really good, as you can see. And that makes it, watching videos a very pleasant experience on this thing. However, the speakers suck. Obviously, gaming is not a hitch. However, well... You wouldn't want to do it on this computer. Now I do all my editing on this computer. However, one major gripe I have about this computer is uh, just how slow it takes to play the file in question most of the time, especially if it's 1080p. It also runs VirtualBox pretty well. As you can tell, I have elementary OS my XP rig, Ubuntu, Android, and Linux Mint. I have all these. And they will work, but sometimes a little slowly because it has to eat up some of my RAM. Finally, this thing also came with Nuance Dragon Assistant, as you're about to see here any minute when it actually decides to load. Oh, there we go. Let's talk. So, Dragon Assistant is basically Cortana, except it's not Cortana. It precedes Cortana by, what was it, like two years or something? Back when Google Assistant was a thing. Well, it is a thing, but like, you know, back when Google Assistant was new. Back in 2012, 2013, something like that. So, give it a second. It's actually rather slow to respond. Hey, hey, Dragon. Open Google Chrome. Um, no. Get out of here. Open Google Chrome. As you can tell, it took me... Oh my god. I never asked for this. Blah, blah, blah. Get out of my sight. Get out of my sight. Alright, let's try this again. Open Google Chrome. It opens Google Keep instead. What a piece of trash. Alright, let's try one more. Open Word 2013. Sometimes it's basically hit and miss with this system. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it just wants to do it. To do it. Now let's try Cortana in comparison. Cortana is much better in this respect. Open Google Chrome. See, I told it to open Google Chrome, and now it's open to Google Chrome. And finally, open Word. Word. Word 2013. As you can tell, it got me right from the get-go. 
better than this piece of trash software that's called Dragon Assistant. I'll have a video on that one day, but for now, this is what you get. That is my review of the Asus Q502LA laptop that I've had for three years. You can buy one of these now for $300. Depreciation has hit this thing hard. Well, it hits all laptops hard at some point. Consider this machine. It's a great computer. I mean, get the wireless card figured out first, but once you do, it's a great computer.